Welcome to Vintage Golfing. Today we have the Ultradyne 2. It's a wood from the 70s. The 19, mid 1970s to be specific. Ultradyne. Who wants to dine in an ultra fashion? That's what they're really asking here. You know who does? Walter Hagen wants to dine in an ultra fashion. Let's move this thing over to my review table and have a closer look. All right, we have a close up here and we have a few things to discuss. For starters, I've moved to my poker mat. Uh, I need to give credit where credit's due. This mat was sent to me by pokerchipforum.com for my other channel, which is called Hobbyphilic. So support pokerchipforum.com. They're not paying for this content. This is just one of my side channels, but I'm using their mat. So looking at this club close up, we have a few things to discuss. Just the features of it, identifying it, and playability. So let's party on. We have a slot right here. Is that a speed slot? No. This is the trailing edge. So you can see the face here. This is the trailing edge or aft portion of the club. And there's a slot there. Okay. Ben Hogan's, many of you are familiar with their speed slot woods where the slots right here. Very different idea. Okay. Then it's four weighted with what they claim is a tungsten weight in a clear insert it has lovely depth here. Can you see that lovely depth to it? it? Gives it a really nice look on the face here. But looking at the sole is where we get a lot of identifying features. So there were two versions of the Ultradyne 2. It was announced in 73. I don't know if they were sold in 73, but for sure 74, 75. This model was the Ultradyne 2. In 76, they introduced a new version where they changed the orientation of the Ultradyne 2, so it's facing this way, I believe. You know you'll have a 76 Ultradyne 2 if you see two brass plugs on the toe end and on the heel end. That's the 76 version. And then 77, they moved to the Ultradyne 3. Pretty clear, I might throw a graphic up or something. The 76 model also, I should mention, doesn't have this aft slot right here. Either way, the four weighting is tungsten, but looking at this earlier, there might be multiple metals in there. I wonder if there is, like I wonder if that tungsten weight was centered on a steel slug or a brass slug or something. I'm not sure. Either way, uh, then looking at the top, when this first came, I looked at this and I was like, look at this metal. Somebody took some automotive paint and airbrushed it onto my club. I'm like, who ruined this beautiful vintage 70s club? And I was reading a Hagen catalog and it said, they call this finish, guess what? Chestnut Supreme, baby. It doesn't say baby, but it's the 70s. So of course it's like party disco atmosphere all over the place, even on the golf course. You think about the style they were wearing back then. Come on, there was nothing subtle about 70s apparel or apparently golf clubs. So kind of a golden, uh, it looked kind of golden, but through the viewfinder, it's looking kind of tan or beige, isn't it? Anyway, I want to call it gold, a gold line across here at the top of the insert. The insert is trapezoidal. I call them straight line volcanoes. I don't know why, but that's what I do. Black with the clear insert four weighted tungsten right there. I'm not sure what you would call that shape. It looks very normal to me. Uh, the sole looks pretty flat compared to, I don't know, a 90s ping wood. I like laminated woods. I might get stoned for this. Um, I like laminated woods. When I play with a laminated wood on the course, I don't worry too much about the wood. It's not, I don't see it, I don't perceive it. And this is all psychological, this is just my opinion. I don't perceive it as ultra uber valuable a piece of, you know, historic forests that are long gone. I just see this as, oh, it's, you know, a cheaper wood that I don't mind, you know, if I scuff it up a little bit or miss hit the ball. That said, even with laminated woods, I feel like when I swing these, I'm very delicate with them. Again, it's a psychological thing. Uh, I'm always looking for splits along here. You can see there's a pin right here, the pinning for the shaft. The shaft looks like at least the hole goes all the way through. You can see the indentation right there. It looks like they're, it's hard to see exactly what this is. It kind of looks like it's whipping, but it's been treated heavily. And then there's a ferrule right here, three gold rings. Moving up to the shaft, they have this spiral fluting right here. I'm thinking about this. Uh, what would this do? What would this actually 
do the spiral fluting. It would add rigidity right here, right? So it would make it less flexible through here. So it would flex down here and up here, but not right here. Why would you do that? Don't you want that flex even across the whole length of your shaft? I don't know, but it's, it's decorative. It's there. So that's what they did. There was a name for this. I've read something about that too. Torque something. I don't remember. The label is still on the shaft, but it's completely worn through. Illegible. Can't read that. Stepped steel shaft. And look at this. The original Walter Hagen grip on here. <laughs> Makes me happy. It's so, it's so intricate. Luckily, they're straight lines, so it's not like Rococo in your face. Curly cues. Look at this. Half cordy grip. This is, I'd say, is still playable because those cords down there, the string they run through there. Lovely grip. Just a normal rubber grip. Nothing that impressive up here. So there we have it. Um, very playable. I would play this. I would game this. Walter Hagen Club uh, with some interesting features. Hope that, you know, is informative. Again, I wish I knew more about the identification and dating it. All I know is for sure 74, 75, maybe 73. Let's take this out onto my mat and see how it does. Ultradyne 2. I'm wearing safety glasses. That tells you how confident I am in my abilities with this wood. So let's see how let's see how we get along here with this. On my range indoor here, I like to use these little winter tees. They seem to work well for me. And we're gonna tee one up here and see what we can do. I'm gonna go through my normal routine here as I'm trying not to kill myself. All right. That actually felt really good. It sounds so different than what I'm used to hearing with my Titleist driver. Usually it's like this pating kind of a sound. Uh, this has a really solid, a really solid, unique sound to it. I say that in the modern era, but I, this was, I guess, very normal back in the day. So see how we do. See if we can hit three in a row here. That one actually felt pretty good. Um, definitely builds confidence when uh, you hit the first one good. That said, this is the dangerous one right here. That one didn't feel like a pure strike. It felt like I hit it thin or something. We'll keep going here. Overall, looking down on this, uh, the metal flake finish isn't distracting. When I look down on this, it just looks like a slightly copper colored wood. It's not really terrible. I also really like this gold line across the top. I wasn't really sure how it would frame up, but it looks very natural down by the wall. So let's see how it goes. Ultradyne 2, Walter Hagen. I loved hitting this club. It feels so good. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. The sound it makes, clack, very endearing. Uh, some metal woods, when you hit them, pating, and it, they ring. It's like you're standing inside of a bell, right? Not these, not the wood, not the wooden woods. The Ultradyne 2 feels amazing. I understand. Historically speaking, these are more common. These have been around for much longer. Wooden clubs have been around much longer than metal woods. Okay, so, but for me in my life, this is a great new, a different, let's say different sound than what I'm used to. So I really appreciate the sound. The wood, I'm a little bit sensitive to breaking the wood. I understand that might not really be an issue, but you compare that to like what I game now. Like here, let me grab this real quick out of my bag here. So this is my current driver right here. Okay, it's not new. When I find something I like, I stick with it. Titleist 910 D2, uh, A1 setting, very normal, just a just a driver. Okay, this doesn't make the pating bell sound. It just has a nice tink to it. I like this club. Now. 
when you think about materials, okay, and you're thinking, hmm, let's see, titanium. What do they make out of titanium? Oh, the SR-71 Blackbird. It's been around for decades and it's still here. It flies at supersonic speeds at a million miles an hour and glows red hot as it re-enters the atmosphere. I don't know if it really glows red, but it's an amazing marvel of engineering made out of titanium. Rock on. I'm not worried about breaking this thing on the course, okay? And then you look at a wooden club. Spruce goose? Maybe the word supersonic and wooden aren't, they don't, you don't use those two words in the same sentence. Does that make sense? So obviously, psychologically, it's just in my opinion, my psychology, I have this block of like, mm, I want to take it easy with wooden clubs. That said, this is laminated. So where does this fall? I'm looking for a vintage set different vintages, we'll explore those after I collect some sets. 70s, is this a candidate for my 70s set? Yes, yes it is. Because I feel like it captures how I perceive the 70s. I was born in the 70s. Disco, there's nothing subtle about the way people dressed in the 70s. Okay, so the way that this is painted with that metal flake, that copper metal flake finish, ooh, I love it. It's a laminated wood, so I'm not worried about gaming it. I could totally hit this club on a golf course and it would be fine. So I'm actually pretty excited about this club. It captures the era. It's something from the era, something that I would play with. So yeah, absolutely. This is on my list of clubs I am definitely interested in. We'll have to look at some others from that era before I make my final decision. But as of right now, I'm totally shopping for some Ultradyne 2 woods. <laughs> They're awesome. Maybe I should try the Ultradyne 1 and 3 as well. Hmm, we'll try that. Thank you so much for watching. Thumbs up, big wooden thumbs up if you like this video. Be sure to subscribe if you want more vintage content. I am the Vintage Golfer.